Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin the OG, the original Grognard. Yeah, we're looking at another Tiller game. I know I said when I got done with the cast, uh, Battle of Caswitz, uh for the for the uh, campaign Atlanta, the American Civil War, that I wasn't going to be doing any more. And in my defense, I do have GMT's Britain Stands Alone set up on the table. It's been there about a month, but I am going through the rules and we are going to be re-recording that. However, I was offered a unique, singular opportunity, and it one I couldn't resist, and I had to jump in on it. So I have made mention before of my buddy Ross over at Napoleonic PC Wargamers, huge Napoleonic Tiller fan. I mean, he's he he's doing Waterloo right now as a team game. Uh, he was doing Bordino there for a while. He did uh, or not Bordino? Was it Bordino? Yeah, it was Bordino. He did Talavera. He does a lot of really good, high-quality Napoleonics. And I actually have learned a lot from him that I was able to apply in my ACW gameplay. Well, he made me an offer. Kind of threw down the gauntlet. Gave me a challenge. That the two of us should play a PBEM game. Which is singularly unique because I normally don't step out of my comfort zone of playing the AI to do... Uh, to do uh, uh, PBM games, but I am for Ross because I like Ross and I think think uh, think this will be an enjoyable game. But what we're going to do is we're going to play, uh, and this is out of Campaign Leipzig, uh, and as you can see right here, we're doing the Battle of Denevitz, uh, which is, what day was that? Uh, September 6th, 1813. Um, and we're both going to be recording it, and we're both, both going to be posting it mostly simultaneous so people can watch both sides of the game. Now, I'm just going to be posting my side of the game on my channel. He's going to be posting his side of the game on his channel. So you should probably go and join his channel if you want to follow through with what's going on with this. Um, uh, Ross has decided to take the French forces uh, under Marshal Ney. And I have got the coalition forces, but I think it's just pretty much just Prussians at this point right here. Um, I, I am in, under no illusions that I'm going to lose this. <laughs> the coalition definitely has the advantage in this scenario. Um, just from a historical standpoint and from an in-game standpoint, I think the French had 60,000 troops in two corps and the coalition had 80,000 troops in two corps. Um, but Ross is a much more accomplished Napoleonics player and knows the, knows uh, the Napoleonic system better than I am. We have also talked about him stepping into the ACW and coming into my area of expertise uh, and doing the exact same thing where both of us play plays out the battle and we both post the videos. Uh, we've also made the gentleman's agreement not to watch each other's videos. So there's going to be a huge backlog of videos I'm going to have to watch after this is all over. Um, but yet yeah, Ross is much more accomplished with Napoleonics and the, the Tiller's Napoleonic system. That advantage will probably slip to me if we do decide to do the Civil War, uh, just because I have more experience with ACW and uh, the the Tiller ACW engine. Um, partially, my problem with Napoleonics is my complete lack of ability to use cavalry. I still haven't gotten figured out the whole cavalry thing yet. Fortunately, at Denowitz, the two huge advantages that France had... Uh, overwhelming artillery and overwhelming cavalry were not present, so that may give me a slight edge. However, yeah, I'm still a poop creek. Um, so he's already started off. He's already done his first move. Let's take a look at the jump map. It's a big map. I mean, if you just take a look at this, is a big map. And so as far as I can tell, he's got at least one, maybe both of his cores strung out along this road from Denowitz all the way through the forest and back to uh, Mark uh, Zvushin, Zvushin. I'm going to apologize now in advance for the, for the names. The French names I'm going to butcher horribly. Most of the German and Prussian names I should be able to get. Ich spreche eine kleine Bäckchen aus Deutsch, aber nicht so gut. So I should be able to get most of the Germans pretty good because I do speak some German. Um, but I'll still probably mess some things up. So I, I don't know where if he has reinforcements. I think this is the way we have cores spread out. And I mean, that's each hex is 250 yards. So that's 
you know, several kilometers that he's strung out that core. So I don't know if that's both cores or if that's just one core right now. Uh, I should probably turn that my steam off so people don't see that pop up. Uh, but he started off the first turn and he started to spread out his troops. Doesn't look like he's going to be pushing too much through the forest. Maybe pushing some troops in there to keep me honest. But he has deployed at least uh, oh, one brigade over here. And looks like he may be trying to come over here and flank me. Just for the record, I am using his uh, icons that he uses for the 2D symbols. I messed around a little bit with trying some different uh, iconography behind it and doing some different colorings, but it just didn't come out good. So just to make things easier on everybody, I'll be using the same counter set that Ross is using just so people, when they watch both videos, have the same point of reference from both of us. Um, so yeah, that's, 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 that's Ross's forces. He's just coming up this road and has started to deploy troops. Now I've already started doing some of my troops. We are using some modified rules, uh, gentlemen's agreement, modified rules. Uh, we are breaking all cavalry units down into squadrons. Uh, so you're going to see a bunch of squadrons of 42, 84. Did I break that? I didn't break that one. Okay. So there's one I didn't break down. Command. Okay, now he's broken down into squadrons. That's kind of one of the house rules at Ross and a lot of the people that play with Ross. And I tend to agree with a lot of the rules. It makes it a little bit more realistic. Um, one of the other rules for cavalry, no more than 300 cavalry per stack. And uh, if you want to initiate a charge with cavalry, you have to. there has to be at least one hex between you and the target before you, you just can't be sitting right next to him and charge. It's a, uh, the horses need time to build up steam. And you just can't go from nothing to everything in one full blast it just it's just cavalry warfare didn't work that way um so yeah it looks like i've got a bunch of cavalry out here uh with this uh with the well, who have i got here this is a uh, fourth corps under bulo bulof um but yeah you, I, i'm seeing a lot of prussian cavalry but they're not really good quality they're all quality D. Actually, those are Russian right there. That's just some of the Russian contingent of, of, uh, of uh, yeah, those are Cossacks of the Prussian army. And yes, we have Commander Phantom. The Phantom army was very, very prolific during the uh, <laughs> Bolian, of course. Almost as, as prolific as the Anonymous family. Uh, so you're going to see probably be seeing a lot of uh, Phantoms out there. Uh, and I got some Lancers, some Ulans over here. Uh, but again, I mean, we're looking at quality D. What are you doing to me, Prussia? Uh, I've got a, this isn't my full core. This is just, uh, just one of my infantry divisions, I believe. Um, fourth, or first brigade. Oh, maybe that, yeah, okay, no, that, 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 yeah, that is definitely just one core. I've got a very weak core over here. Um, yeah, again, if I had decent troops, maybe I could think I could hold out for a little while, but we're looking at C&D quality troops. Ugh, I haven't moved many of these. Like I said, I've broken down uh, the cavalry so far. Anyway, so he's coming hell-bent for leather, leather, hell-bent for leather for these guys right here. And they're not going to last very long. <laughs> it's just all there is to it. However... These guys have one singular purpose. Tie down the French Corps as much as possible. Because... I got a very large corps over here that is getting ready to move into position. And as we can see, this is... Third Corps! And these are very, very, very large brigades. And very full corps... These guys over here are kind of just a defensive tripwire force. This is my main core. And again, we're looking at a lot of Prussian cavalry. And I've already broke these down into the squadrons. These guys are all dragoons. And again, and hey, look at there. Another another commander phantom. Um, again, we're looking at I, a couple quality bees. Oh, but there we go. Quality D. Now, those are the Lancers. Okay, so it looks like the Dragoons are the quality Bs. The Lancers are quality Cs and Ds. There's some more Lancers there. Uh, I've even got more cavalry back here. 
Dragoons, Quality B. Okay, I can use those. So, and we've got some cavalry over here. Uh, these are the Pomeranians and their uh, cavalry sword. Then their Quality B. So, you know, I can, I can kind of rely on them. Uh, this is first or fourth brigade. But again, let's. These guys are slightly better quality. Some A's and B's backed up by C's and D's. And let's see, third brigade back here. Uh, you know, we're looking at, you know, some again, some A's and B's, but backed up by D's. Uh, and this is, okay, again, that's third corps, but that's sixth brigade. Again, we're looking at some A's and B's. All right, so these guys have got some pretty good quality, but the reserves are just absolute crap. Uh, and then this is third, uh, fifth brigade over here. Fifth brigade, fifth brigade of third corps. And again, we're looking at A's and B's in the front line, but it tapers off to C's and D's in reserve. <laughs> can only do with what you got. All right, so my plan, if I can, uh, if I'm assuming this correct, Ross's cores are going to be moving up this road to Denovitz. Then, oh, one other thing I should probably point out before I go over my master plan, I do have reinforcements. I've got another core. Hey, look at that. Another F Commander Phantom. Um, I've got another core coming in between now. Oh, let's see. What time is it now? Uh, 11, starting about one o'clock all the way up to six o'clock. I've got another core that's going to be coming here, uh, by Kurtz Lipsdorf. Um, so I'm going to have two cores, whoops, that are go or set to hit his flank. If these guys can hang out, hold up. So, but anyways, basically what this, this core is going to do is I'm going to form this core, get them out of line formation, put them in column formation and march them down probably and start forming out that side of uh, Wollumsdorf or maybe Niedergorfsdorf, Niedergorfs, Niedergorfsdorf, yeah, fucking Germans, man. Uh, but anyways, right along here, start forming up the reform, the, the core here which at which point he'll probably see me and start forming up over this way. But when the reinforcements start coming, I'm going to take them down here. There are two, two schools of thought. I haven't completely decided on it yet. Move the core up and ma ma mesh them with what third core at Wollumsdorf already will they'll, will have already be formed up there. Or I can take them here down to Blonstorf, Seehausen, and up to uh, Golstorf. And so have a core formed here and a core formed here. So I'm going to have to think about that. The only problem I see with pushing the reserve core along this uh, Dalekau and Wollumsdorf and Niedergorstorf road is that, well, it's, oops. I mean, it's a road but can I really move two core down it? <laughs> so my, my knee jerk reaction is that I'm going to push them down this direction. And, uh, so I'll have one core on each road. Um, the problem is, is that if he sees me, well, he'll, he'll see me coming. If he takes this for first core and, and directs it against them and then if his reserves, if he does have another second corps coming on down here by uh, Mark Zvushin, uh, they're going to come up this road and possibly intercept me. So we'll we'll just have to see what happens. That's the plan, anyways. Um, so let me go ahead and pause this real quick, as I am because I know it's going to be too boring for everybody to watch. Uh, but I'll be right back after I move everybody. All right, that took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but a lot of troops, you know, one plus core on the field. Um, yeah, just basically trying to move my guys to get uh, situated. Uh, took this brigade, get them up on the hill. I did move my uh, these Lancers back a little bit, and then maybe we'll try to form up over here. I uh, want them to maybe even push them down a little bit further. Because it looks like his cavalry is back here. 
Uh, but just keep him guessing on that. And then I've got some Cossacks back here. That's basically my only reserve. Uh, the rest of these guys are going to try to form a line right along here because he is going to have, it looks like he has, does have guys some, some guys pushing through the forest. Uh, moved up this cavalry a little bit. And the other core is going to be moving very, very slowly to form up. These guys back here, they're moving through grass, or they're going, moving through wheat fields. Uh, these guys... And these two brigades will probably be able to form up relatively easy. This one will be able to form up on this road. And then the cavalry, eh, mix of dragoons and lancers, not sure what I'm going to do with them yet. But I think, because it is going to take me so long to get these three back brigades all sussed together, uh, with my reserves come on, I may push them down through this southern road. Just so I don't play uh, traffic jet with myself. So anyways, uh, we're probably going to be doing two turns per video. Um, so I guess we will get at it. I will get this sent off to Ross and we'll see you when I get back, when he gets back to me. All right, into turn two. Just watched his playthrough and let's get into it. Uh, really, there's only one place I have to look. This big, long road. Oh, one thing I did want to mention if you are watching both mine and Ross's videos, and I hope that you are watching and enjoying both of our videos while we go through this playthrough, don't make comments in the, in the, in the comment section on either, on either one of our channels on what the other one is doing. We're trying to keep this as much of a gentleman's agreement fog of war game as possible. Now, I don't say I'm not saying a lot of you would do that, but there might be one or two that may be tempted. Please just just don't do that. We're tr we're trying to uh, to keep the integrity of of the fog of war going. That being said, um, yeah, he's definitely pushed a lot. He's pushing up this right flank. Got this uh, line of skirmishers out there. Plus, he's got a bunch of guys that I saw behind this ridge line. So he is definitely moving up this way. His cav that was over here on on the left did definitely start to shift. And so I'm thinking that's in response to my uh, lancers over here moving. So I'm going to have to be cautious with them. Oh, and I did, for, I did forget to mention, I do have a few troops out here at Uterburg, Ut Um But it's a couple squadrons of cav, you know, a unit of guns and a couple infantry reg regiments. Nothing that impressive. It's just kind of a tripwire. Um, so, uh, and he's definitely moving more troops up into the forest. Uh, and he's starting to peel part of the core off to head up towards Niedergorstorf. Uh, so that's, the problem is, I think he's going to get there before me. Yeah, he's going to get there well before me. So I may have to... Uh, Think of making my line and reforming up the core at uh, Wolmsdorf because uh, he's definitely going to get to Niedergorstorf before I do. I love the German language. I really do. Terrifies me and fascinates me both at the same time. So, um, need to get this cavalry pushed down here. Need to need to make a presence here. Basically, my cavalry on both my wings with this core right here are roughly the same... <clears throat> quality in numbers I mean they're all D quality mounted lancers and lancers there and I've got my Cossacks see that 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 is my weak point I'm just really 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 not uh, not familiar with how to implement cavalry and that's going to be a problem for me um so yeah Pretty sure that's an entire core he's got moving up. Just just looking at the size of my core here, that's that's one core. It's probably just his first core. I'm sure, pretty sure he's got a second core in reserve that's going to be coming in. Hopefully down here, or maybe over here. Let's see. Yeah, they could possibly show up over here. Um, it's kind of good that he split his units off uh, to come up this road. That means I'm not going to be facing as big a... Uh, Let's face it; these guys are going to collapse if someone looks at him or speaks a harsh word to him in in that direction. So, let me go ahead and start moving some troops around, and uh, I'll come back and we'll do a little bit of a wrap up. 
All right, let's take a look at what we did. Um, moved my cavalry down a little bit to make it look like I'm going to be fainting on his flank. But again, he's pulling his cavalry over. My cavalry, not really good quality. I just want to make him think I'm going to be harassing. I doubt I'll be doing much with them. Uh, my own cavalry here in the center of the uh, Lancers and Cossacks. I think I'll keep them kind of in reserve for now. Part of me wants to push them over here to make look like I've got a bigger show of strength over on my left flank, but we'll keep them in reserve right here right now. Uh, as he is pushing more troops up, the chances are he's going to come out this road right here. So I'll just form a line of infantry right here. I'll get some skirmishers. I'll push some skirmishers into the woods. Just kind of a tripwire. Uh, I may in the future shorten this line but if we look at where say this is the end of his 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 line i mean I, I don't want him to try to outflank me plus if i have a spot here it puts this artillery in danger well i could put some skirmishers in front of it to protect it but it also gives at least my cossacks and my lancers a path through to for a counter attack I don't know. Those guys aren't going to hold very long. Um, these guys are continuing moving forward. I want to try to get them kind of down to around here to make them think eh, maybe pull off. If if these units are heading for Nieder, Niedergorstorf uh, and all of a sudden I have Cossacks here, he may pull them off to deal with them, which will give... Uh, Third Corps a chance to get more into position. And right now, Third Corps is looking somewhat organized, but it's very much a bunch of squirrels at a rave. Not, I don't have all my ducks in a row over here. Um, yeah, my cavalry, this cavalry is actually now too far away. Uh, whoops, let's show what I'm talking about. Right there is uh, General Lieutenant Bulo. Uh, he's the Corps commander. And one thing I will say about about Napoleonics, the Napoleonics that pisses me off, V and C. Yeah, see, I don't like that. I hit the C. It's not command radius. Normally, in most Tiller games, you hit V. It shows you the visible hexes. C is the command range. No, in Napoleonics, I got to go up and go. Well, I think there may be maybe some buttons over here, but view visible hexes. And command, right? I, I, I hate having to hit those buttons. I just, I, I prefer my hotkeys. Actually, let's take a look. I very rarely, let's see, that's toggle, toggle bases, leaders, objectives. Oh, right there. Okay, so at least there's visible hexes. So I can hit that quick. Is there a command? Let's jump map. I don't think there's a command. But, it, well, okay, at least I know that there that button is there now. Yeah, I know how to play a game, honestly. Um. So, yeah, uh, Bulo is right there. And let's take a look at his command range. Uh, view command range for Bulo. Yeah, it's my <laughs> cav is outside. So I'm going to have to hold up or at least probably shift my cav a little bit over because as the core forms up, uh, Bulo will be following along right along here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a mess. It's a messy mess mess. Uh, <laughs> um, but what can you do? I got to get my core over there. Da, 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 da. What are we looking at? Command. Yeah, see, see, five or ten seconds for me to find the button when normally it's just click on the C and that makes life a lot easier. Okay, well, I think that's about it. I am going to go ahead and shoot this off to Ross and uh, as soon as he gets it, he will probably post his uh, first two turns um, and as soon as I get done with this, I'm going to go ahead and and uh, start processing it and editing it. Although, of course, Ross does really much better cooler editing than I can do. I just don't have the tools for it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll be seeing, of course, I'm telling you this now, but it should be up within a couple hours and you get to start watching both videos. Questions, comments, comments, complaints, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. I'll see everybody next time.